Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode edition of the Comeback Podcast with Mark Jensen. And this week, we got Austin Cooper from Sober Evolution. What's up, bro? How you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, I, I'll just give you a little background of, of who I am and what I was doing, right? So I've battled drugs and alcohol for 21 years. I got two and a half years clean and sober starting the 27th. I've had seven major relapses, lost huge businesses, all that shit, right? Um, I, I, I found my voice on the internet selling to car guys, building a podcast, building online stuff. Wasn't my calling. Now I want to help people in this space. Somehow you came, well, I'm not gonna lie, like I was looking around and see what's going on. And I found you. And I'm like, oh, I think I can relate to this guy. I like what he's about. And here we are. So do me a favor. Introduce yourself. Tell these guys a little bit about what you do. And then we'll get into your story. You can tell as much or as little as you want. Great. Well, again, uh, thanks for having me. I, I've been browsing around your website and, and your Instagram account and uh, listening to some of your podcasts. And it's just all amazing. And I can tell you've got an awesome story. Uh, but yeah, my name is Austin Cooper. Uh, I am the founder of Sober Evolution, uh, which is, you know, an online based, uh, mostly social media based uh, form of inspiration uh, to help others uh, who are, you know, battling with uh, substance abuse and those of us who are in recovery and really trying to build our lives. Um, you know, early on in my recovery, I really clung on to the coaches and the people who were living uh, the lives that I wanted to live. And I've been able to gain a lot of tools and resources from them. That's really built my own life. And, uh, you know, I just wanted a way to give that back. And so I started Sober Evolution back in 2016. It's almost, I think it's right about two years exactly on the dot uh, while we're filming this right now awesome. um, that started. So yeah, that's, it, it's turned into, you know, a coaching program just started up something called Light Hustler Evolution with uh, the New York Times bestselling author Anna David. Um, she's also a recovery advocate, and so that's you know kind of a stem off of Sober Evolution. We'll get into that in a minute. I want to talk about you, where you're from. I know you mentioned you're from Ohio, living in Tampa now. Give us a background of Austin before Sober Evolution. I mean, you don't have to, whatever you want to say, right? Better up yeah, there. so I uh, grew up in Columbus, Ohio. You know, I went to, I had a great family. I went to good schools and, um, you know, just got caught up in the mix in uh, high school and, and, you know, really found that alcohol kind of numbed uh, certain situations and uh, <clears throat> it kind of allowed me to reach outside of my comfort zone. Um, I tie that back to like some early childhood, you know, just normal stuff that uh, would occur in some people's lives, but, uh, you know, just getting made fun of early in, uh, or actually it was uh, late elementary school, it just kind of turned me down as far as, you know, pursuing uh, the people that I wanted to hang out with, you know, it was tough for me to talk to girls. Well, once I drank, it was a complete opposite. So uh -huh. right once that moment, that first time that I got drunk, I was like, I am going to be doing this. I'm, I'm going to make a career out of it, basically. <laughs> Um, and then started trying other drugs and, uh, you know, it, it, it was all fun and games at first. And, you know, before I knew it, I was hooked on them and I, I just couldn't get away from them. And it ended up uh, causing me to drop out of college multiple times. Um, so I never got a degree. I just accrued a lot of, uh, student loan debt and, um, all that good stuff. And of course it started straining, you know, my relationship with my family and, and my friends and the people that I loved and cared about. I uh, really started isolating and, <clears throat> you know, was just, uh, I ended up having to move back at home when I was 23, not what I, where I wanted to be. Uh, and I was just downright miserable. I mean, I, I was, you know, feeling suicidal and, and just, you know, yeah, but I was always a victim, you know, it's like, why me? Why, why have I been given this life? Um, so, you know, my family really, took note of everything. It was a stranger living in their house, basically. Uh, they gave me an intervention in 2013, April of 2013. And, you know, I knew that this was my opportunity to either build my life starting from scratch or keep going down the road I was going down and probably not make it out alive. So, <clears throat> you know, I went to treatment for 22 days. Um, I noticed, you know, I was learning so much from the people that had in their lives what I wanted to have too. And, you know, it wasn't so much 
the sobriety time that people have, but what are the experiences are they're having? And so I just became fascinated with that. And outside of rehab, I started kind of networking and pushing past my comfort zones because that's one of the things they told me that they did. And um, so, yeah, I, I started networking and uh, decided that I wanted to get my real estate license. That was a goal I always wanted to do. I wanted to prove it to myself that I could do it. So I networked and met <clears throat> this multi-million dollar producing uh, real estate agent in Columbus. She took me under her wing and uh, you know helped me get my real estate license. And I was just like, man, that's cool. What else can I do with my life kind of thing? And so you know, through multiple attempts at trying to start businesses and failing, I just kept pushing through and pushing through. Um, I started gaining more coaches, you know, from fitness coaches or life coaches or business coaches. Started, you know, going uh, to networking events, things like that, that I would have never done before, but I was doing it because, you know, those who had in their lives what I wanted were doing that. <clears throat> and uh, then I eventually got turned on to reading personal development books and business books. And that uh, is when my life really started ramping up. And I started learning all of these really neat ways of building my character and self love and enjoying life. And, uh, you know, through that, I, I really came into the idea, how can I give this back, you know, this, this joyous life and, and this self love and this motivation and, you know, tips and tools or whatever it is to building someone's life and really putting back together the pieces that were, you know, lost from early childhood until now. And uh, yeah, so I just started, uh, you know, posting quotes and, uh, you know, all these mindsets and everything on Instagram. And before I knew it, it just exploded. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's just, and not only did it explode, which was cool, but it was just doing something that I'm passionate about. And uh, finally finding that, man, it has just been one yeah. heck of an awesome I want to ask you a question real quick. So while you were doing that, while you're on this amazing sobriety journey and self-discovery and becoming the Austin that you've always wanted to be, right? Did you have any slip ups? Did you stay clean and sober? When you got out of rehab, did you make it? Like, were stay, you statistic or did I, you stay clean? I stayed clean and sober. And, um, you know, I occasionally in the beginning, you know, obviously life happens. And I, I think some of the points where I was at most at risk is with the opposite sex uh, trying to date, um, <clears throat> you know, and just the dating scene in general, you know, I mean, uh, there can be certain situations where someone's like, you want to drink and, and it's this attractive person that you want to be with, uh, just out of kind of that honeymoon moment of uh, just meeting someone who's, who's really attractive or whatever. Um, but then <clears throat> also, you know, just uh, getting pissed off in certain situations, you know, you would get so or I would get so boiled up inside and be like, in my mind, I'm gonna get back at them by screwing up my life and they're gonna feel so bad about it. Just these ridiculous things that I would never you know, think of today. But you know, I luckily just kind of went back to what I had been learning and you know, I, I had been getting good at you know, kind of stepping back, assessing the situation, looking at the pros and the cons, and then moving forward from there. So you know, I, I, I'm, very blessed that you know I never slipped up, man. Because I don't think I would be able to make it out. I, I really don't. I uh, I was in rehab. I got out and I relapsed in six hours. Wow, man! Um, I, I went so I was selling cars at the time. I got picked up, got brought to the dealership. They handed me keys to a car and some money, and it was Fourth of July weekend. And I live in Wisconsin. And the next thing you know, it was six hours later. I'm higher than a kite, fucking drunk and. Just life was, and then I got caught, right? Like I got caught by all, I go to the bar where all the people from the dealership are hanging out, which I never would go to. I like walk right into the lion's den of, hey, oh, hey asshole. like you're, you, we just put, they paid for me to go to rehab. They're like, Hey, you, you're, you're done. Anyways, wow. I went down to Florida, got myself right two in it, two, two weeks and then came back and put my life together. But, uh, it's not about me today. It's about you. One of the things yeah. that stood out to me, um, was goal setting. I read something and somewhere, maybe it's for your sober evolution or what you do. And we'll talk about what that is in a minute, but you actually, I thought it was pretty cool. You give these guys like practical goals or help them set their goals. Cause they don't know how, or what's that about? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think sometimes and a lot of times we're kind of 
caught up with life or overwhelmed. And it's hard when someone puts you on the spot, like, what are your goals? <laughs> and uh, so there's this really cool uh, kind of goal wheel that Anna and I have used <clears throat> before. And this is with more with uh, Light Hustler Evolution. But um, it really just, it's literally a wheel on a piece of paper. And each, you know, piece of that pie is a broad you know, kind of goal. Um, so financial goals, relationship goals, uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, there's all these broader goals. And then what we do in between that is break it down with these examples of, you know, what the different goals can be. And I think just, especially when you're caught up with life and, and it's hard to think of, you know, what your goals are in that moment, <clears throat> it's awesome to see examples and be like, oh wait, that would be pretty cool for me to accomplish and it just gets you brainstorming and uh, I just think it's an incredible tool or way to you know figure out what's important to you you know what's worth going for do you find that these I so your one of my questions was like who's your audience what's your audience is it is it guys that are fresh out of rehab is it guys that are thinking about making the the switch to complete sobriety do they have six months nine months a year like because I don't you know goals weren't on my forefront. Like I've been setting goals for years, right? I built all these businesses. I just knew how to do it. But if I think back into the reality of my relapses, it wasn't about goal setting. So when do you find these guys are really ready to start setting goals? I mean, it, it man, it's all over the place. I, I've met people who, you know, are still unfortunately out there using, um, but they've got these big goals that they've, you know, always had and they want to accomplish them. Um, but a lot of times, you know, it does take time. And I think it takes time to really learn about yourself and that self-love. I think, you know, in my first year of my, you know, recovery, it was all about figuring out that self-love. Um, and, you know, with that, I, in order for me to kind of use my time up, say like Friday night, like that was the night that I wanted to go out and get fucked up, you know, yeah. uh, same with Saturday, all day Saturday um, <clears throat> with friends and everything. So, you know, early on in my recovery, my mind was so surrounded with, uh, you know, I'm missing out on the world right now because everybody everywhere is doing things, uh, that I enjoy doing. Um, and so I would want to learn how to like fill up my time. Um, and so a lot of that was, you know, really reflecting on who I am and what my interests are. And then, you know, in that I, I would just, I would almost force myself to set certain goals. I, early on, it was fitness goals. Um, and that really helped, you know, for multiple reasons. Um, earlier, before I dropped out of college, I was taking a lot of psychology courses and nutrition courses. And I knew that my mind would be deprived of the endorphins uh, that I was, you know, I, I was using drugs to feel good. Right. Um, and my body only knew how to produce those when I was using drugs because of the drugs. So I knew that as soon as I'm done, uh, using my body's not going to be able to produce those naturally. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to get my body to naturally produce those endorphins, uh, into my brain again. And I knew that exercise and nutrition was going to be that, man, I didn't want to go to the gym. I didn't want to work out, you know, I just wanted to lay around um, but I knew that wasn't good for me. So I really forced myself early on to set these, uh, you know, exercise and fitness and nutrition goals. And that kind of, you know, that almost was the, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of, uh, the foundation of the rest of my recovery, because I realized how cool it was to actually achieve those goals. And I learned how to set long-term goals and then the shorter term goals in between. And so that, like I said, was kind of that foundation and, and taught me how, but man, the, the crowd, it's all over the place. And I, I see people reach it out for, you know, three years of sobriety and they've still never, you know, really set goals. Right. Um, and but you, then vice versa. And let me ask you this question. It's a good time to bring it up. So your thoughts on recovery, AA, NA, alternative recovery, or what we do here. So my thought, my, my whole thing that I believe is that that guy that's three years into his addiction or three years into his recovery is addicted to the addiction, right? He probably is going to these meetings. He probably hasn't really looked at thriving in life, setting goals, building businesses. Um, probably doesn't even know if that's possible, right? Cause he's been told for so long that you've got to hit meeting, 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 meeting. And then being creatures of habit, we just keep going and going, and going, right? 
So what's your thoughts on, on, on that? Am I onto something or? Well, I mean, I started out, uh, the treatment center I went to was 12 step based. Um, I did the 90 meetings in 90 days, but I was really just revolving around the same thing with that. And, you know, it was taking up my time during my day to accomplish the things I wanted to accomplish. Um, and I didn't want to keep, you know, focusing on the addiction part. I wanted to fix, focus on, you know, putting my life back together to where I fully love myself and, and care about myself. Um, that is what had to be my primary focus. I wasn't getting that so much from 12 steps, but you know, I know tons and tons of people who use it and get all of that out of it. Plus they're able to set goals and do amazing things. Um, but it just wasn't my path, uh, that I eventually went down. So wasn't for me either. Yeah. Um, how about this, man? So what, Sober Evolution, what is that? Define that in the business. So I guess some of my guys are listening to this. They want to try out what you do. What, what is it? It's an online community. It's, so how does it work? Well, really, uh, Sober Evolution is just the, you know, Instagram and Facebook. Okay. So, so the it's other the one. of inspiration. Okay. So then what's the, the actual business portion of it? Well, I originally uh, created a business just to try out you know, I, I had never started an LLC before. And so I created one back in, uh, I think it was 2016, April of 2016, just to do it. Um, I created a t-shirt business. Um, so it was really an experiment. Um, and it was really cool because, you know, one of the reasons why I was so open to going to treatment when my parents gave me that intervention is because I saw someone on Facebook be so open about his uh, you know, him going to rehab and going through recovery and building his life and accomplishing goals, it, you know, sparked something within me that allowed me to make that decision to go through with going to rehab. And so I was like, you know, it'd be cool if I could create these t-shirts with, you know, just saying that I'm sober and it's okay. Just right. in case you're walking past someone that may be struggling deep down inside internally and they see someone be proud of their, you know, recovery and sobriety, that might be that spark for them as well. And so I uh, did that for, you know, a couple of years and it was, you know, really neat uh, selling shirts and all that. It's just so much to deal with the uh, uh, retail side of things. And I decided to kind of get out of that. And so um, after that, I decided to start uh, coaching. And so more goal-based coaching, uh, life coaching, and, you know, it's not focused just on addiction or recovery. Of course, you know, some of my clients will be in recovery or some are, are trying to make it to recovery, uh, but really this is goal-based and it's just, a, you know, kind of the, the same situation that when I was using life coaches and building my life, learning how to love myself. So I do, you know, do coaching through Sober Evolution. Uh, it's kind of on the quieter side, you know, it, it's not something I promote all the time, but, you know, it's, it's my own thing that I, I do on the side of Light Hustler Evolution. And Light Hustler Evolution, what is that? That's so Light Hustler Evolution is a group-based form of goal setting and coaching. Okay. Um, so like I said, Anna, David, and I got together. We're like, you know, we want to form this group that is affordable to everyone. Um, coaching, you know, one-on-one -on -one typically is going to be, you know, a little less affordable for some, and we wanted to create something that's affordable for everybody. And we can all collaborate and network and gain ideas and share, you know, tools and resources. And so that's what we did. You know, we launched this, uh, just on, uh, actually December 25th is when we, uh, officially launched it. Of 17? Of year, so. 17. How's, how's yeah, it going so far? Very, very new. How, is it expanding? It is. It is. Uh, every week. I mean, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and, you know, just so much amazing input. And I mean, the people that are in there already are just incredible and it just keeps getting better and better as more people join. It's just, it's one of those things, you know, it's, it's self building and the, it, it shines within that group as well is, is just the more people in there, the better because we're getting more information. I'm learning new things every day from it. So keeps and, growing. And, you know, the network keeps growing and probably attracts like, like attracts like, right. You start getting the right people in there next, you know, things going to blow up. Right. Right. Yeah. And we, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to the year and, you know, really we're trying to do this, uh, 
you know, it's a, it's something that you can join at any time. You know, it's not just this beginning of the year, you know, it's not for the new year's resolution. This is for, if you have goals, period. So it's like a monthly subscription based business where you guys can mean goal planning, goal setting, accountability type strategy groups. Exactly. Exactly. But not based around addiction. Right, not based around addiction. A lot of members in there, of course, are in recovery and uh, wanting to be in recovery, which is great because one of the things I've realized is, you know, the principles of success. It doesn't matter what it, you know, is for. If it's for real estate, business, uh, uh, just enjoying life, um, accomplishing anything really is based on, you know, some some pretty general principles. And so it's amazing that, you know, someone can post something about their success towards their real estate company and gain it for their own life building uh, path that they're going. And so that's, that's what I think is pretty amazing about it. That's awesome. Well, we're coming close on timer. So I do want to have, ask you one question for my guys. You've got more clo- uh, sober time than me. Give me three tips for these guys that are out there that are struggling that maybe I haven't given. Let's just hear from you from another guy that could help somebody get through another day, another minute, another hour, whatever it may be. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's, of course, in certain situations, hard to see into that future. But what you got to trust is that it will be better uh, if you keep going down the road of recovery. Um, you know, the biggest tip too, I think is, is to use the tools that are out there. Um, and there's tons and it keeps growing and growing and growing. Uh, the, you know, different advocates that are in recovery, reach out to them. Um, I think, you know, one of the coolest things I learned, I think it's called the five second rule. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but typically there's a five second period of time that we either decide to do something or not to do something. If we don't make the decision within that five seconds, we're not going to do it. And so it's one of those things you just got to take that leap of faith uh, and decide within five, you know, seconds. So right once a, a, an opportunity comes up, take it uh, and just don't hold back. So I, I think those are uh, big tips is just use those tools that are there, take advantage of those opportunities um, and just understand that the fact is, things will get better uh, on the road to recovery. Got to realize that things aren't going to get better uh, with drugs or alcohol. Appreciate that, man. I'm going to put you on the spot real quick since we talk so much about goals and hit me. What's your biggest goal for 2018? Oh man. Well, I mean, whatever area you want, I get it. We break them down, but what do you want to really hammer down in 2018? Um, man, uh, of course, uh, growing this light hustler group, uh, to a thousand people, I think is the biggest uh, thing because, you know, that's a thousand people that we can help out. Um, but also I mentioned earlier, my student loan debt, I've still got that looming over my head. So, uh, I've, you know, planned out different ways of, uh, completely paying that off here in, uh, 2018. And I'm very excited to not be losing sleep over (laughs) any debt looming over my head anymore. So that is a big one. Awesome. All right, Austin, do me a favor, man. Tell my guys where they can find you, your Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, Yeah, my Instagram page is at Sober Evolution. Um, You can find me at Sober Evolution on Facebook as well. And my uh, webpage is sober-evolution.com. Man, you can reach out to me anytime. Uh, What I love about these apps and, and services is that there's messengers. Use them to your advantage. Uh, if you have a question or anything, let me know. Absolutely. Well, listen, bro, I appreciate your time, man. I know you're an hour ahead. Let's go do your thing for the night. Thanks for uh, taking the time out and spending time with my, uh, my guys. All right. Thanks, you too. Thanks for having me. Later, man. See you.